عزیز تو کئی ہستی کئی ہستی سرداری یا خود بھاؤ ہستی راست بگو کے دورا ترہ سے شان نہ خواہد بود ہر جا کے بکوئی برسالم کئی ہستی کئی ہستی That ominous evening of 14th January 1761 turned out to be one of the most spine-chilling evenings in the history of India. Countless Maratha warriors lay dead on the battlefield. Jankoji Shinde was severely wounded and taken as a captive. Samsher Bahadur and Antaji Mankeshwar were also wounded but they managed to escape. The Afghan army then raided the Maratha camp. Men and women from the Maratha camp were assaulted. and taken captives Ahmed Shah Abdali then visited the mosque of Bu Ali Kalandar at Panipat The Marathas had executed Qutub Shah and Abdus Samad Khan at Kunjpura hence their children asked Abdali for the permission to slaughter the Maratha captives Abdali reluctantly permitted them to massacre for some time but 20 miles away from Panipat the son of Qutub Shah then murdered captives at Sonipat while the son of Abdus Samad Khan killed prisoners of war near Bahadurgarh gruesome details of this massacre are documented by contemporary historians the maratha prisoners were made to stand in a line they were fed with few grains of gram some water and after which a heinous game of beheading them began there is no count on how many were killed that evening the towers made from the severed heads were mounted at the entrance of the tents of these afghan generals The Peshwa Balaji Bajirao left Pune sometime in late October 1760. The last letter that the Peshwa received from Sadashiv Rao informed him about the events following the victory at Kunjpura leading up to the camp at Panipat when the Marathas were dominant. On his way the Peshwa sent a letter to Baburao Konher in Jhansi asking him to check and report back on the developments near Panipat. He reached Paitan via Siddhatek. While at Paitan he married Radha Bai the daughter of Vakre Naik a famous money lender two of his other officers were also married to suitable brides he left paitan on 31st december towards delhi people make him a scapegoat for the debacle at panipat the timing of his marriage is questioned since his son and cousin were fighting a great battle at panipat there is the claim that he hurriedly married to a daughter of a money lender to raise funds for the ongoing panipat campaign as he had been in heavy debt After his marriage the Peshwa hurried north he was accompanied by Janoji Bhosle and his army from Nagpur Jankoji Shinde was captured alive on the battlefield and was taken as a prisoner to the camp of Afghan general Barkhordar Khan Kashiraj a nobleman at the court of Shuja Udola unsuccessfully mediated for Jankoji's release Motilal Khatri the envoy of Barkhordar Khan agreed to release Jankoji Shinde for a ransom of 7 lakh rupees unfortunately when Kashiraj informed about Jankoji to Shuja Udola Najib Khan Rohila was also present Najib Khan being the sworn enemy of the Shinde clan quickly complained against Barkhodar Khan to the wazir and then Shah Wali Khan informed Ahmed Shah Abdali that a prisoner is being hidden from you for a private ransom as a result Ahmed Shah Abdali dispatched men to raid Barkhordar Khan's camp. Barkhordar Khan quickly instructed his men to kill and bury the captives. A disastrous end to a heroic tale of a brave Jankoji Shinde. Contemporary records mention that there were 32 heaps of corpses on the battlefield. The day after the battle, Anubgir Gosai from Shuja Udola's army requested him that the maratha noblemen should be cremated according to their religion shuja udola urged the same to abdali who then on accepting some pay off permitted shuja udola to cremate them as he wished while cremating these corpses a body was found there lay seven pearls under his body it had no head no hairs on his right leg and a cut on his waist and back 
the corpse was identified by the scars on the body to be of Sadashiv Rao. These scars were left by the attacks Sadashiv Rao had suffered at the hands of Haider Khan Gardi in Pune. Eventually, his head was also found, which was hidden by another Afghan soldier. An elephant carrying a body was brought to Abdali by some Pathans. Young and old from the Afghan army gathered to see the body of this Maratha prince. It was Vishwas Rao. The Afghans and Abdali himself was amazed to see a lifeless yet so handsome body of a young Vishwas Rao. The soldiers demanded that the corpse be mummified and taken back home as a trophy. Shuja Dola intervened. He convinced Abdali to forget the animosity now that the battle is over and let the Hindu men perform the final rites on this body as well. Shuja Dola eventually paid for their bodies and handed them to Sheshdhar Pandit and Ganesh Pandit Vedanti for their last rites. All these brave men were honored with final rites. A severely wounded Samshir Bahadur was brought to Deeg by his men, but he too soon succumbed to his injuries. Fatally injured Paji Hari Supekar and Amtaji Mankeshwar managed to reach Farrukhnagar near Delhi. They were robbed and mercilessly beaten by the locals. They too eventually succumbed to this brutality. News of Sadashiv Rao's death had not yet reached his wife, Parvati Bai. The Maratha non-combatant camp knew only about the death of Vishwas Rao. She was hoping that Bhav had escaped and would rejoin her at a safer place. Visaji Krishna Zogdan was appointed to protect Parvati Bai. During the chaos that ensued, people fled to save their lives. So did Visaji. One Janoji Bhintade then carried Parvati Bai on his back for a while. Then one Piraji Raut helped her carry on his horse towards Delhi. A few miles before they would reach Delhi, they met Mallar Rao Holkar. He was helping the people who had fled Panipat. Then Mallar Rao Holkar, Nana Purandare and Bhaipad Rao Chitnis all moved south with the rescued people. The survivors who fled Panipat were robbed and looted not only by the Afghan soldiers but also local thugs. When Nana Fadnavis escaped, Bapuji Fadke advised him to ditch his clothes and his horse as the thugs could kill him for it. Nana complied and began travelling on foot. He was chased a few times but he managed to escape. His mother Rakma Baido was lost in the chaos of the battle. No news of her was ever heard again. After travelling a great distance, he reached in the vicinity of Deeg. Here he met his wife who was rescued by one Viroji Baraukar. Perhaps this experience is what made him the man he became, playing a critical role later in the Maratha resurrection. Malara Holkar's travelling party reached Bhind on the 11th day after the battle. Nana Fadnavis joined them here, and then travelling together, they all reached Gwalior. Surajmal Jat, the king of Bharatpur, helped the survivors who fled for their lives. He gave them food 5 rupees each and some clothes. His wife Rani Kishori, also known as Hasiya, personally looked after the well-being of some of these survivors. Ahmad Shah Abdali arrived in Delhi on 29th of January 1761. His soldiers were unhappy due to the long duration away from home. They repeatedly complained about it to Abdali. While in Delhi, a quarrel broke out between the Afghan soldiers and the soldiers of Shuja Uddala. Shuja was reluctantly waiting in the Afghan camp with the expectation of being appointed as the wazir. But now annoyed at the treatment his men received, Shuja Uddala left the Afghan camp and returned back to Awadh. Abdali then made official appointments in Delhi. Shah Alam was declared as the emperor, with Prince Mirza Jawabakht ruling as the crown prince. Imadul Mulk was reappointed as the wazir, while Najib Khan was appointed as the Mir Bakshi and his ambassador. With no more money or treasures in sight, Abdali began planning for his return to Afghanistan. The Peshwa received contradicting reports from the people he met at Belsa. Some said Marathas had won at Panipat. On 24th of January, while travelling further north, his men intercepted a rider carrying some prey orders and letters to Aurangabad. They found a coded letter in the bunch. It read, Do Moti Galat, Das Peace Ashrafat Farkat, Kurda Rupayaku Ganat Nahi, a coded message that read, Two pearls, possibly meaning Sadashiv and Vishwas Rao, were lost. 10 to 20 gold coins were spent, meaning at least 10 to 20 of the Maratha generals were lost. And loose change lost is beyond calculation. 
indicating the loss of life at Panipat. From the text of the letter, the Peshwa suspected a heavy defeat at Panipat and a great loss of life. He quickly rushed further north. While staying at Pichod, Mallara Holkar accompanied with Parvati Bai, Nana Purandare and Nana Fadnavis met the Peshwa. They delivered him the terrible news of defeat and death of Vishwasrao. Sadashivrao was last seen by Nana Fadnavis surrounded by the Afghan soldiers. There was no report of him after that. On receiving this news, the Peshwa went into a state of shock. Back in Delhi, Abdali received the news of Maratha army approaching north under the command of the Peshwa. Abdali was in no position to fight another battle. He quickly called the Maratha envoy Bapuji Hingne and informed him that he intends no bad blood between him and the Marathas if the Marathas accept his authority over Punjab. He then sent Yaqub Ali Khan with a letter of condolence and peace to the Peshwa. In the letter he wrote, There is no reason for hostility among us. Your son Vishwas Rao and brother Sadashi Rao were killed in the battlefield because we were helpless. They started the battle so we had to fight to defend ourselves. However, it grieves me upon seeing that they were killed. You can manage the affairs of Delhi as earlier. We have no objection to it. But leave the Punjab region beyond Satlaj happily to us. Let Shah Alam continue as the emperor and forget the past mishaps between us. A mutual understanding should remain forever is my request to you, which I hope you would fulfill. Abdali also sent a letter to the Rajput king Madho Singh, describing the battle and the bravery of the Maratha forces. In the letter, he writes that he had never seen bravery similar to what the Marathas displayed at Panipat. If the heroes like Rustam and Isfandiyar had witnessed the scene of the battle, they would have indeed bit their fingers in admiration. He concluded the letter stating that it was mere luck and God's grace that gave him the victory. By now, Abdali also received the news of a rebellion staging up in Afghanistan in his absence. And hence, he left Delhi on 20th of March in haste. Along with the loot, the Afghans also carried prisoners of war as slaves. Some of these slaves were sold in Baluchistan. Even today, some in Baluchistan claim that their ancestors were Maratha. They identify themselves as the Bukti Marathas. The Peshwa could never recover from the shocking loss of his son and his cousin. Mourning his loss, he retired south in declining health. He was moved to the hill temple of Parvati, where he passed away on Tuesday 23rd of June 1761. He was cremated the next day near the Lakdi bridge in Pune. The account of Panipat usually ends with the death of the Peshwa. But it is important to summarize the events that transpired with the defeat at Panipat. The Marathas lost the province of Punjab after their defeat at Panipat. Abdali did not cross the Satlaj river after the battle of Panipat. He invaded India four more times, but mainly focused on the affairs of Punjab. The Sikhs in Punjab fought multiple battles with him, eventually crumbling his strength and chasing the Afghans away from Punjab. Najib Khan Rohila controlled the affairs of Delhi for a few years, but as the Marathas regained their strength, he and his successors had to surrender the outpost in Duab and retreat to Rohil Khand. In 1770, Najib Khan died of several diseases. The Marathas were so furious with Najib Khan, even after his death, that when they conquered the fort of Pathargad in Rohil Khand, the capital of the Rohilas, they desecrated the tomb of Najib Khan. In the next decade after Panipat, the Marathas recaptured most of the lost posts in the north. Ramchandra Ganesh Kanade and Visaji Krishna Biniwale led a victorious campaign in the north which re-established the Maratha supremacy. Mahaji Shinde or Mahaji Sindhya as the world knows him today had lost one of his leg on the battlefield of Panipat but with acute military acumen and learning lessons from the defeat at Panipat he strengthened the foundation of the Maratha empire in northern India. Such was the supremacy that Emperor Shah Alam named the Peshwa and Mahaji Sindhya as his regents and also permitted the Maratha saffron flag to be hoisted at the fort of Delhi where it waved until 1803. The importance of the third battle of Panipat lies in the fact that when the time came, Indians stood up to fight the invaders. No nation can ever afford to neglect its history. A better understanding of the past always serves as the guide for the future.
see you another time with another story until then thank you and do subscribe to historiography